So yes, you join me at the western terminus of the central line at West Ryslip. Now this wasn't always intended to be the terminus, you can see just down at the end of the platforms there where they left space for a future expansion further westwards that like never happened. Um, this is my first time, I've, I've been to this station before to check out some of the works that are happening uh, with HS2 and things like that, but you don't get a very good view and you can't really head further west and actually the best way to get the proper views of the works going on is by train heading further west on a Chiltern train and that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, mainly to look at the HS2 works but to look at a few other things that I find interesting as well. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. West Ryslip is a pretty major hub in terms of HS2 construction because it's the point at which the London tunnels towards Old Oak Common and Euston start. Behind these hoardings is where the two tunnel boring machines, Caroline and Sushila, will start digging towards the city centre. There's all sorts you can see out the window, from conveyor belts to carry the spoil, to tunnel rings, the precast concrete segments which will be used to line the walls of the tunnels, abutments for yet to be installed bridges, it's all go here at West Ryslip. A little further along, you can see a series of cranes and temporary decking along the course of what will be the Colne Valley Viaduct, but more on that later. Okay. There is a train there, nice. Um, I've come one stop down the line from West Ryslip to Denham. Now this is the place that the central line was going to go to, but that's, that's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is because half an hour-ish walk in that direction is the Colne Valley Viaduct, and I want to see what progress they've made on it. I've seen various pictures circulating on Twitter and stuff, and it looks substantial. I want to see it with my own eyes. Um, and I suppose with the camera's eyes and therefore your eyes as well because internet YouTube clever things um, so yeah I am walking so that that's the plan uh, yeah on my journey towards the viaduct I passed the Denham Film Studios it looks to be mostly flats nowadays, but if anyone knows more about the history of it, I'd be curious to learn more. Further along, the path had narrowed, but a crane could be seen in the distance. Shortly after this, the path diverged into some woods, and as we got closer to the viaduct, works became more clear to see, with the road on the left and the future rail line on the right. The path rejoined the road, and that's when I saw it. That looks like the bridge. No way! I can actually see the bridge now. I can see it sort of appearing through. Okay, is that the end of the bridge? I, c I can definitely see the bridge now. I'm very, oh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. This is Dominique, the launching girder being used to construct the viaduct. I stole this animation sequence from Aaron Morby, who I think also stole it from HS2. Nonetheless, the way it works is that by supporting itself off sections of the bridge which have already been completed, it builds outwards from pre-installed pillars along the course of the viaduct, such as this one which you can see now. It simultaneously builds outwards on both sides so that the weight and forces on the pillar are balanced. It does this until the span has been completed, with the gap between the two sections being filled. Once this has been done, the entire structure moves along the completed viaduct to start building off the next pillar. Whilst this is happening, the small gap in the middle of the span is filled in with concrete. As of the time of filming, it looks like a span had just been completed, with the aforementioned gap in the process of being filled, whilst the girder had moved along to the next pillar and started building out from there. 
So it looks like it's already moved to the next pillar. It's finished building out from that pillar, has moved to the next one and getting ready to join the two together. The process is then repeated again and again along the course of the 3.4 kilometer viaduct and it should, should be complete by May 2025. Also, if you do want a sense of scale, that's just, that's what a person looks like on it. Like it's big. <laughs> I genuinely can't express how mind-boggling this is. This is so cool. The thing I find crazy about all this as well, ah, oh, look at it. Oh. The thing I find crazy about it is not just that they're building it, because I mean, look at it, this is just, like, it's very impressive. And this ain't even, this ain't even half of it yet. Like, this is going to be nearly three and a half kilometers long. This is gonna be the longest viaduct in Britain. So, you know, that's impressive as well. But the, the, the thing I find even more crazy is that then in a few years, not that long, like 10 years or so, maybe less, this will be carrying. 200 mile an hour trains from London to Birmingham, non-stop. In, you know, if you exclude Old Oak Common and places like that, but that's still London. And one day, I'm gonna be on one of those trains. I can't wait for that day, because this is proper infrastructure. This is properly, this is gonna change the course of the country. So, now that I've actually seen this, um, I'm not done. I would like to keep exploring Chilton, so I'm going to be going up to the next major settlement along the line, uh, to, to Gerard's Cross, because I'm, I believe there's a certain tunnel there that's rather interesting. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a bit later than when you last saw me, but I'm now at Gerard's Cross to look at that. I'm probably not going to spend as long here as I spent at the Colne Valley Viaduct, but it's something I've wanted to check out for a while. So here at Gerrard's Cross, what they've done is they've built a Tesco on top of the railway, as in like the railway was here first, then they literally covered it over, plonked a Tesco on top. So, you know, since it's there, let's go take a look. Mission successful. Okay, so I've got my bag of crisps from the Tesco, which is just up there. Uh, and you might be wondering why I actually decided to come here. Well, basically because it's interesting. Because like, this was just a cutting. And then they sort of filled it in, built this tunnel over, plonked a Tesco on top. It's, you know, I went there, I've got my bag of crisps, which I shall consume on the train later. It's got the car park, which if you head to the end of the car park, you can kind of see down onto the railway, but not really. Um, so the point is that they've, uh, they've, you know, infilled on top of the railway, but they do this in a lot of places. So the reason this one is particularly famous is because while they were doing it, it actually collapsed onto the railway and it was quite dramatic. So the plan was fairly simple, cut and cover. The cutting had already been made, so the plan was to install a tunnel and then cover it over, plonk the Tesco's on top and all would be hunky-dory. The tunnel was designed to be wide enough for four tracks so that the line was future-proofed, and everything was going well until 30th of June 2005. Picture this, you're the driver of a Chilton service to London Marlebone and are sitting at Gerrard's Cross station, when suddenly the tunnel being constructed over the line ahead of you collapses onto the tracks, completely blocking the line. Meanwhile, a train coming the other way had to make an emergency stop. Luckily, nobody was harmed, but there's no denying the seriousness of this incident and the fact that had things gone a little differently, we could be dealing with a major catastrophe. So, what happened? Well, an investigation was carried out by the Health and Safety Executive, 
but it wasn't until last year when a draft was finally released under a Freedom of Information request. Only took them 17 years. The report states that the cause of the collapse was due to the placing of too much Type 1A fill over the area of the crown of the tunnel prior to placing and compacting sufficient material in the area of the tunnel haunches adjacent to the north and south site access roads and towards the east side of the site. Whew! Basically what this means is that too much fill was placed on top of the arch and not enough of it on the sides. For an arch to work, it needs more or less equal pressure on all sides. Without the counteracting side forces, when too much was placed on top, it was unable to support the weight and buckled underneath it, thus causing the collapse. Some of these pictures showing the tunnel post-collapse showed just how much fill had been placed on top of the tunnel compared with relatively little on the sides. Now this whole thing is a bit of a simplification, and I'm by no means an expert, however it is the most likely explanation. If you would like to learn more about the incident in more depth, then Gareth Dennis has a great video on the topic under his Rail Natter series, which I'm a big fan of. As well as this, many of the pictures you've been seeing are from midwaypark.co.uk, which I found to be a really great resource, so that's another place I'd recommend visiting if you'd like to learn more. Furthermore, I'll leave a link to the aforementioned report in the description in case you want to do some more reading for yourself. Um, yeah, so that's basically going to sort of conclude it for this video. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are on this kind of thing, if you'd like to see more of this kind of thing, because I've just kind of been exploring, I mean, only really two or three stations of the Chilton Network, but if you'd like me to explore further up the line, um, I'm interested in maybe going to Beckenstock Model Village, which is a couple of spots further along, um, or anything like that, leave me a comment. I really hope that isn't drowning me out. I'm going to have to listen to this back. Anyway, yes, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to be hopping on a train home now. Um, let me know if you want more of this kind of thing, as I said earlier. Um, I'll see you next time.